we spoke of uh, we spoke about uh, positively positively uh, optimistic mindset. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like you mentioned something um, about how negative negativity also starts as, as a habit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it was uh, it was Dean uh, uh, asking uh, something about being positive, and I, and I was trying to explain the difference between uh, positivity and optimism. Positivity is a choice that you make. You choose to be positive. Optimism is an atmosphere that we create by being positive. And an atmosphere is controlled with the kind of results that we have in life. Yeah. Um, a lot of people uh, wonder why what they have, what they get, what they experience is not favorable to them. But you don't understand that. We, we create atmospheres that make certain things conducive, possible or not possible. Hmm. I'll give you a good example. You can take a good seed and plant a good seed on a good ground. But in the atmosphere, the environment in which it's planted, it's not great. It's not going to do well. We definitely have to have an episode about uh, your farming background as well. <laughs> yeah, look, I think a rich history there. I think farming, farming is like life itself. Life is all about cultivation. Mm. We spoke earlier about cultivating. People who want to pay for things they should cultivate. A lot of people want to rather pay for something mm. that in, in, in real sense needs to be cultivated. So I don't have time to cultivate, so can I pay for it? So, you know, a good example is you can go to the shop and buy, and buy a vegetable or, 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 you know, like a fruit or something. And, and you would have to pay for it to get it. Or you can choose to cultivate it and not just necessarily have it when you need it, but be able to, to spare some and give up. And I think life's about that. The more you cultivate value, not only do you need to always have what you need, but now you also become an avenue to give to others. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there that are depressed and sad and miserable. And, and do not understand that misery is a process. You find a miserable, miserable person, they follow the process to get there. Either they're conscious of that fact or not. Hmm. In fact, some of the most dangerous things is when you are busy creating something and you're not aware you're creating it. Uh, uh, a good example is, uh, even I'm going to use more of a uh, fantasy concept now, is uh, when you watch movies of, you know, virus infections and things like that in the world, how people would sort of metamorphose into something horrible or whatever you want to call it, how you will be bitten by something and you don't know that thing is busy working in your body. And, and all of a sudden, at, at some point, boom, here comes this thing that erupts and real creeps out of you and you're oh my god and life is the same that every single day we're living the mindset that we cultivate creates ultimately an environment an atmosphere that dictates so we create an atmosphere that dictates what would flourish in our lives and around us mm. and, and, and there's a lot of people that don't understand the difference between uh, uh, being positive and, and being optimistic See, people think optimi op op optimism is a choice. They go hand in hand, but one goes before the other. It, it takes a positive person to, to, to experience optimism. So you find people who are negative-minded trying to be optimistic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he's saying that, but his, his everyday engagement of thinking is actually the negative of that, the opposite of that. Yeah, you know, I, I believe that things are going to get better, mm. but he's not, he's saying that, trying to convince other people to believe that, but himself yeah. doesn't believe that, and neither do they head in the direction, thought process-wise. So I had a conversation with my wife, and and I said, so something she said, and I said, don't, don't think about things like that. And I said, you must understand the power of how you think creates the atmospheres around you and that dictates what will grow and what will not grow. Yeah, so I, 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 
And in talking to my wife, I was, I was telling her about the the way we think. Mm. Because you see, thinking is a choice. Okay? But thinking becomes a habit. Everybody is an addict of thought. All of us. Mm. Everybody's addicted to thinking. Yeah. Everybody. There is no human being that's not addicted to thinking. Our minds either wander mm. or our minds meditate. But they're always thinking about something. Even children, they've got creative imagination. That is practicing thinking. So thinking becomes an addictive process. You might as well make it a good addiction. Everybody is addicted to thinking. The most important thing is that you are addicted to thinking positively so that that in itself cultivates an atmosphere that ensures that the experiences you have in life are favorable. Mm. You cannot control the events in your life. Yeah. But if you control the way you think and control the atmosphere in which you live, if you cultivate an atmosphere that ensures you are happy, mm. you see, the, the world tends to always make so much emphasis around success and stuff and having things. Mm. But do not place value on smaller basic stuff. Things that you might somebody somebody thinks, no, I just want I just want to be rich. You can be rich and miserable. Mm. And nobody wants to have that. What you want in life is the things that are really truly valuable. And I can tell you, if you look around today, a lot of people are unhappy because it's just based on how they think. And you know, I like in the world they call it energy, I like to call it spirit. There's a lot of stuff you got a negative energy. Negative mm. energy is created by negative thoughts. Yes. So if I if I dwell on what's negative, the energy that I carry, the aura that I carry. Have you ever had a chat with someone that really makes you tired when they're done talking to you? Yes. You know, there are those people that the, the, no matter how hard they try, they'll be upbeat. Mm. There's just an energy about them that mm -hmm. can really, really drain an individual. Mm. And 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 they those people are always looking for those people. They're looking for others to pick them up. Can I tell you something? Nobody is designed or equipped to pick you up. You are the only one that can pick you up. And that is a function of cultivating. And you must understand the power of cultivation. Don't be buying or begging for what you should cultivate. Don't be buying or begging for the things you should cultivate. Can I give you a good example? Somebody feels that they're miserable alone. Mm. So in order to cure their loneliness, they get into a relationship. So now you're hoping that someone will bring to you what you have failed to cultivate within yourself. Mm. And that is such an important thing. You oh yeah. The idea of completing one another, why it sounds so beautiful, you must be complete by yourself. Mm. A lot of people who hate being alone think relationship is the solution to being alone. No. It's you finding meaningful, valuable things to do with your time while you're alone. People don't understand that being alone is an opportunity to invest. Yes, actually. So we seek relationships. Mm. I was talking to someone earlier today, a client of mine, and she, she said, no, I'll be off from tomorrow. She's like, so from tomorrow I'm, I'm going to a party. So I was like... Mm. Oh, okay. I was like, if I would thought, I would have thought that based on the kind of work you do, you want to rest. She's like, no, rest at home. I can't sit in my house and be. And I know that it's the feeling of I can't be by myself. It isn't. Isn't it very strange? Mm. People who cannot enjoy their own company hope that other people will enjoy their company. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. and, and, and see, all of those things sometimes boils down to the way we think, because if you don't think right, being alone magnifies your thoughts. What silence does is that it increases the volume of what you're thinking. So if what you're thinking all day is not pleasant and you're busy, you won't feel a lot of weight on it. But the moment you're all by yourself, what do you think solitary, solitary confinement does to people? It breaks people. Even the hardened criminals get broken by solitary confinement. Why? Because all that evil thought in his head that can sometimes be lowered by other events, Oh, now you're all by yourself. It's like those are people that you're talking to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because that's what happens. Your thought takes a life force on itself. And that's when the energy, or people will never make that mistake 
that we live in a world where everything is physical. No, there's a whole lot of spiritual effect to, to life. If, if everything was physical, depression would not exist. Let, let's just be honest with ourselves. If everything was physical, hmm. depression would not exist. That people are depressed. That, that, is a, that is an advanced level of thought yes. that are no longer patterns. They become bosses. They now govern the individual. They dictate how the individual feels. Hmm. They even dictate how they, what the individual does. Almost like an addiction to the drug. Yes. And you find people doing things that they don't want to do, but they're doing those things. The, 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 the importance of being a farmer of your own mind. People don't farm their minds and then wonder why weeds grow in there. Because if you don't farm your mind, something or someone will farm that mind for you. What I mean by that is that vacuum does not exist in life, even in your top life. If you don't put deliberately put things in there that you want to see fruits of, mm. then something else will grow there. And the fruit of it you might not like. But unfortunately, if it grows, well, you have to live with the fruit. I see that in, in my, for example, in my backyard, the grass. Anywhere there is grass, wheat doesn't really grow. But where there's a patch, it's easier for wheat to grow because you are telling the wheat, this is room for you to grow. Oh. Oh, yeah. So if you if you want to have weedless grass, just make sure the grass is tight and, and healthy. Hmm. And that's the same thing with the mind. Thinking starts as a, uh, what do you call it? as a as a choice oh i've chosen to now i'm thinking about this thing today i'm thinking about this thing today but if you think about it tomorrow and the day after tomorrow it becomes a pattern mm. and what becomes a pattern becomes a habit and what becomes a habit at the time becomes a force and when it's a force even when you don't want to you are you know that people that think positively and it gets to a point that if a negative thought crosses your mind it's almost like an alarm bell goes off Yes, <laughs> like oh, like yeah, not out, used to that. Like oh, okay, that's that is that, 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 that that's not normal. You know, uh, uh, it's the same as if you go through a metal dete detector. What does it do? If you your belt, your keys, or whatever is in off. your pocket, it goes off. Yeah. Some people are so lost in negativity that when another negative thought comes, they can't tell the difference. It's just another, yes. you know, same yeah. usual stuff's coming. And the power of cultivation is powerful. Everybody loves the habit. But you want to make sure you're harvesting what you planted. Mm. You're not harvesting what you allowed to grow. A lot of people don't make conscious decisions about these things. For example, I'm going to say this to you. The way you think determines the people you attract to you. So thinking is not just about powerful, sort of, you know, power, what do you call it, the power of positive thought so you can, you know, be successful. No. Your relationship is influenced by your thought process. Your overall peace of mind is dictated thought process. People who can't sleep at night, can I be honest with you? People can't sleep at night because their thoughts keep them awake. You ask yourself, how can thoughts keep a person awake? It's possible because it's become a life force. It's a force. Mm. It's more like it tells you how to feel and what to think and what to do along. So what's important? Is that like I said, everybody's an addict of their thought. We mm. all think and we become addicted to thinking. There is nobody on the planet who can say that he spent an hour without thinking. It's not possible. Maybe except if you're in coma. Mm. As long as you're breathing, there is a thought going on in your head at every given time. So cultivate good ones. I was reading this article about the US Army, um, how they teach them to, to uh, almost like a meditation type of uh, way to sleep. Mm. In like um, it's all about what's in your head, like um, removing any thoughts in your head mm. and just like be calm, be peaceful. Um, even your eyebrows, you need to, you know, set, um, uh, drop them mm. and your shoulders and all that. So it's like, um, it's just like a meditation that they use. Yeah. Because imagine those guys are going through wars and... Being a soldier is a hectic Because you see things that have capacity to, to paralyze you. Yes. A lot of traumatic things. So what they're trying to do is to get them to disconnect from that. Mm. And that in disconnecting with that, the guy can go to sleep in two minutes. And it's all about the mind. Uh... Oh, look, the, the, the mind is a the mind is a weapon. 
So mind is not just a place of thinking. Your mm. mind's a weapon. And it can be a weapon against you, by the way. So yeah. it being a weapon is just not a weapon you can use, but a weapon that can be used against you. For example, someone keeps listening to what people say about them. Mm. You're not good enough, you're not good enough. And your mind goes to work against you mm. because it's exposed to the information that others are dishing out to. Mm. You know, we talked about that uh, um, uh, um, what was it, uh, earlier, about entertainment. The word, for me, entertainment is you're telling something to enter. You're opening a door for something. I yeah. know you talked about, you know, you, 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 you watch a horror movie and you can't sleep at night. You know, what? like I was watching uh, the, the Serial Killer, mm. um, Jeffrey Dahmer series on Netflix. And the night I just, as I'm sleeping, like I was just thinking about it. I just, <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it's crazy. the word obsession is the key word to obsession is access. You let it in, mm. it stays long enough, it becomes an obsession. Anything. So, you cannot control what comes to your mind, but you can determine what stays. Mm. So, a lot of people are, I'm not going to, no, no, you, you, you cannot always control what comes to your mind. Sometimes stuff has come to your mind that's not even you. You know, it's not like it's not consistent with your nature, but it will mm. cross your mind. Yeah. And when it does, you determine what stays. You might not be able to control what comes in, but you can determine what stays. Your, your mind is like a house. And you start by controlling what comes in, what you do by determining what comes in. But when you get charge of that, eventually one point you will become a gatekeeper. You can control what comes in and what doesn't come in. And in life, I'm going to go back to the issue of cultivation. Because it's a very subtle thing. Have you ever, ever planted something before? So I've got a veggie patch in my backyard. Mm. And you see, these things sometimes they grow slowly that you don't even know they're growing. Yeah. And the danger of life are the things that are being cultivated in you now that you're not aware of. Yeah, of course. That, will, that you are going to reap a harvest of in about a year from now. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, you mentioned the Syria kid. Mm -hmm. Were they born that way? Nobody was born that way. Yeah. You know, I know that uh, Lady Gaga sang that I was born this way. Mm -hmm. There are people born a specific way, but no one was born evil. So when a person is so evil to, the, to that degree where the, the value of human life is mm -hmm. so is non-existent, something happened. And that something did not happen overnight. It was a process. Yeah. Either he was bullied as a child and did not know how to decompress, how to let that go, how to forgive. Mm. How sometimes look, mm. forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is for your own good. You let it go so you can move on. Yes. See, so these people who some people want to forgive because the person apologized. You don't forgive based on apology. Mm. You forgive because it's a burden you carry that has capacity to crush you. Mm -hmm. It gets heavier. I've noticed that. Forgive, you see, the longer it takes for you to forgive, the heavier the burden of the pain gets. Mm -hmm. Every year gets just slightly heavier than it was the year before. Yes. And you see bitter people who cannot stand specific individuals because they've had years of just holding on to this he hurt me and he didn't he didn't apologize you talk about divorce now what mm. what happens it, it, look no one wakes up and says i'm i'm out of love for you and that's it life's especially over the, move on especially the children they take it yes it's it's heavy because you don't make a choice to say i need to let it go and, and, and this ties in with energy thought process cultivation mm. if i'm cultivating so let's put it this way everything that grows it's either a weed, even if it's a good thing. You know what the, the definition of a weed is? When I was in high, in high school, we did, um, what do you call it now? Agricultural science. And, and part of what we're taught is the definition of a weed. Mm. A weed is anything you didn't plant that's growing. And it, by the way, it can be a fruit. If you didn't plant it, it qualifies for a weed. <laughs> okay. So if you've got a spinach plantation, and you got lettuce growing there. Mm. Yes, it's edible, but it's a weed because you didn't plant it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is speaking to cultivation and being a custodian of your mind, the custodian of your thought process. You gotta own that. No one 
can own that for you. You can get information from people. You can get knowledge from others. But what dwells here, what, what is cultivated here, comes down to the individual. So whatever I didn't plan that's growing, I need to take, I need to address that. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that have, they are not gatekeepers of their mind. Anything goes in, all sorts of information. Mm -hmm. For example, guys who are uh, what, extremists, how do they get followed, you ask yourself? How do people who are so negative in society get following? How can people violent get followed? Because people who stay neutral become victims. If you're neutral minded, your mind becomes a playground for all yeah. sorts of information. Yes, yes, yes. So what happens is that a neutral mind, let me paint a picture of a neutral mind to you. A neutral mind is a ground that has been cleared. Cleared of grass, everything, and then they prepared it for planting, except they didn't plant anything there. Hmm. Ever seen one of those before? You drive past a farm Some and it's been prepped. Grass. It's been prepped. Hmm. You know, they've broken the soil, they've done everything. The only thing they haven't done is plant something there. That's what a neutral person is. So a new someone person. else planting their own ideas and oh, yeah. propaganda. So, your, so your, your, your mind then becomes suitable for all sorts of information to learn and grow. So surprise, surprise, mm -hmm. when what you didn't plant is growing, like I said, if you didn't plant it, it's a weed. So be careful how you hear and be careful how you process what you hear. You can hear good stuff, but is it good for you? You can hear stuff that are valuable, but is it valuable to you? So let me put it to you this way. Oxygen is valuable to human beings, correct? Yes. How about plants? No. It's not. It's a valuable product, but not for everyone. Water is essential for fishes hmm. to breathe, not for us as human beings. So if you're a fish, water is life. If you're a human being, you can still do without water for a couple of days, but they can't. So what you consider valuable will be different from what others consider valuable. So the danger of having a neutral mind is that you become a victim of circumstances. You become a victim of what's happening. So things happen to you and you never ever get to be the one who creates things for yourself. It's just happening in there. So a neutral person says, well, I'm neither here or there. It's a very dangerous place to be. Indifference is a dangerous... One of the reasons why society breaks down morals fall off and systems don't work and politicians are failing and all of the list of things going and communities are just in confusion is because there are too many indifferent people too many neutral people mm. you know what i find very interesting how somebody will be robbed on the streets of south africa for example which is very popular in johannesburg for example someone has been robbed everybody can see that he's been robbed and no one like absolutely nobody will say that's wrong i'm going to defend the guy it's a shocking reality, mm -hmm. but it does happen. Yeah. You know, it's a scary thing when I think about it. Mm. You know, Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. But you see, that's the thing. You cannot effect change if you are indifferent. Indifferent people mm. are not capable to effect change. And if society has more indifferent people, you know what we get? We get all the riffraffs and all the negative ones, the minority, who are not majority, minority, mm. run in town because there's too many neutral people. Because neutral people are, what do you call them? They are, they are, they are what do you call I'm, I'm looking for the right word. They are soldiers waiting to be recruited. Okay. Neutral people. It's an so army of people be, waiting to be recruited. You must be this quote that I read of from Martin Luther King. In the end, we will not be words of our enemies. But the silence of our friends. Ah, ah, uh huh. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you see that? What he's saying there is that the enemy is not the problem. It's that our friends will not rise up and stand with us. They say they are our friends, but when it's time to raise your fist and believe in something, you're like, ah, uh, not quite sure. I don't know so about. So they I, could be easily swayed. Yeah, and the reason why you're easily swayed. Guess what? One, one of the things I, I, I once text a friend of mine talking about 20 years ago now when I used to have my first cell phone, like a huge phone like this with a green face on it. I'll never forget that phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a, I can't even remember the name of the phone. One of those huge Motorola kind of phones. And, and, I, and I text the person and I said, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. In life, 
There's no neutrality. All these things that people just want to stay on, you know, somewhere in the gray. There is no gray line. You're either black or you're white. Mm. You know, there's either light or darkness. There is no, there is yeah. no middle ground. And there's just too many people in society who don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to be the odd one. They want to be. Mm. And, and, and I want to say something before, just before Sabu read that uh, 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 quote. I was going to say something. When I was growing up, I used to notice that thing a lot. A lot of people are not happy with something, but no one will say anything. Yeah. Almost like they're waiting for the first person who's going to, you know, mm. you know, who's the first one to die. <laughs> you know, who's, who's going to rise up and say no, and then uh, we can't sort of see. Uh, uh, we watched a movie together, my wife and I, a couple of years ago, uh, titled "God's Not Dead," and and this kid was challenging a university professor about it because the university professor said God is dead. You know, the concept of God is nonsense. You know, God. So this kid took it upon himself to like, I'm going to defend God. And what I find very interesting in the story is the fact that he does a research, studies, does a lot of things, yeah. and then finally on his final presentation, when he finished, he asked a question, his whole class. And he says, is God dead? And they all sat there looking at him. And the Chinese kids stood up first, and he goes, God's not dead. What I find interesting is that it took around a few seconds, another guy got up. Then somebody else got up. Then I noticed that the longer it took, the more people were standing, the faster people got up. So it's almost like there were people who were never going to stand up there if somebody didn't stand up first and say, this is my opinion about this thing. Yes. And our society, our communities, our families, we need to live with a lot more sense of, what you call, a, a, a bigger sense of conviction. The reason why there's so much confusion in our society is because of indifference. The problem with see, confusion is the is because you're moving through to, you're moving through to, uh, to, what do you call it moving between two options mm. and you can't make up your mind. Ever been to the ice cream shop and they ask you vanilla or strawberry? Mm. You like and you freeze for a moment. Go, vanilla or strawberry. That's why they came up with the ice cream called vanilla or strawberry. You yeah. can mix it together. For those of you who are confused, we got a vanilla and strawberry for you. <laughs> and then life is the same, but unfortunately in life it's not vanilla and strawberry. You know what they serve you in life? They serve you strawberry that looks like it's got vanilla to it, but it's only strawberry. Do you understand what I'm saying? What I mean by that is that if you are indifferent, they will come and sell you something. It looks like a mix of both to, to appease you, but they know at the end of the day it's just one. Yeah. Society is full of indifferent people, and it's a danger. And therefore, the picking. So these people are waiting to be recruited. Yes. Waiting to be recruited by whatever. And that's why when we represent something, we need to represent it properly. You don't support something because there's a lot of people shouting yes. yes. No. Would you choose to stand alone even if nobody will stand next to you? Yes. That is what conviction is. Conviction is not camaraderie. Mm -hmm. We are many doing it together. Mm -hmm. Conviction is, I don't care if there's somebody else there, I'm standing anyways. And that is important to society. Because if we are going to hold politicians accountable, if we're going to hold leaders accountable, if we're going to hold ourselves accountable, we're going to start with here. I need to live with a sense of conviction. Mm -hmm. If I believe in something, I'm going to stand next to what I believe. I'm not waiting for, am I the, are there more people like me? No, I don't need more people like me. I'll stand all by myself if I have to. And that comes with a strong mindset. Oh, yes. And which that's, is a positive mindset. Which is where, this, and, and, and that's why I'm going back, because so, I want to... Oh, so, People understand where we're going with this. What's this whole thing about indifference? Indifference starts in your mind. The moment you start running between two options and you can't make up your mind, you are programming yourself to be joining the group of indifferent people. And some people are there. Yeah. Do you know there are women who don't even know what they're looking for in a man? So whoever guy walks up us and say, baby, 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 mm. they're going to say yes. Yes. You know, I remember I read a book a couple of years ago and a lady and a man asked a lady, so what are you looking for in a man? Said, I want a tall, dark, dark and hands, handsome guy. It's like, you just described the horse. <laughs> <laughs> but at least she knows what she's looking for. <laughs> it's important in life to know what you're looking for, but mm -hmm. most important to know what you are about. Yes. If you have an identity, it helps you to know. This is what I'm about. And I think there's just too many people who do not have identity. So mm -hmm. guess what happens to them? They identify with others. Yeah. Without an identity, you will identify with someone else. There's too many chameleons in our society. They take on the shape and size and color of anything that's close to them. Proximity prompts them for identity. Mm. They don't have one of their own. 
So when they are gray, when they are around a gray object, they become gray. They are around a red object, they become red. And you see them. And we see sometimes we call that society has very fancy names for these things. One of it is called peer pressure. Yeah. And we used to think peer pressure was just a thing for teenagers sure. and young adults. Mm. No. There's a lot of 45 year olds that are still, well, that's they're still experiencing well, peer pressure. <laughs> a guy doesn't drink. Mm. And he's in the, in the group of guys that drink. And he starts to feel pressure mm. to do what they're doing because all of a sudden, see the thing about what everybody is doing, without a sense of conviction, what everybody is doing becomes your way of determining what's right and wrong. Majority vote dictates to you what's right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you have a conviction, it's not about what everybody else is doing. Mm. And that's important because you have then made a decision before, yes. before the event unfolds. Yes. The people who don't make up their mind before an event unfolds, I promise you, they are the ones waiting for me to be picked. And they are the ones who go anyway. You say, are you are you up or down? Uh, we're just waiting to see which which one which one really you know where, where do we go? Uh, and I mean, not 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 that I want to be political, yeah. but I want to talk about how many young people don't register to vote, and that's yeah. not it just that's not just a South African problem. That's yeah. an African problem. You go to Nigeria, same pro same problem. It's the old people who are voting, yeah. the ones on their way out, and the ones who the future is there at home, on Twitter, on Instagram, on their phones. And they have a voice on the phone, but yes. has decided to switch up the actual voice that they've got. Yeah, they've got fingers to vote. Their thumb is for voting, but they use it for scrolling oh, and yeah. typing stuff. <laughs> and everyone has an opinion about somebody else's opinion. They don't yes. have an opinion of their own. <laughs> yes. You know, it's amazing how one person will tweet one thing and he gets like 500,000 retweets. Yeah. Like, what is, One opinion, 500,000 yes. comments. Yes. Like, when is your comment going to turn into an opinion that yes. is yours that you can stand by? Even on, uh, on TikTok, what, what when these videos, two videos, uh, yeah. one person is reviewing a video yeah. by some people, like, and then somebody else reviews that other person who reviewed. Oh my God, I'm yeah, like, and it's a constant, it's a chain reaction. And, and, and you know something I find also very interesting, and I, I'm not very big on social media, but you know, when you have like an Instagram account or a TikTok account, you have like somebody will join your TikTok account because they will, they will start following mm -hmm. you now and you can see their profile. What always intrigues me, or amazes me, or maybe puzzles me is the people who have got, you, you see him say, uh, uh, the people following him, he's got 30 followers, mm -hmm. but he's got 7,000 people he's following. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. what is that? Are you a follower? When do you become a person that is worthy of being followed? But I realized something. People follow mostly people who know what their story is. Yes. While in society, there's a lot of people who just follow blindly. I get that. Mm. But if you command true following, it's because there's something worth following. Mm. And that comes down to thought process. How is your mind working? Mm. You cannot be a, a follower in your mind and be a leader in life. No. No, sir. It doesn't work. You see, it, it's just people who want to show up and perform. Life, you can't deceive anybody. In life, the real thing is the real thing. Yes. Whatever you cultivate within is what you'll experience on the outside. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people, they dress and talk the talk, but their thoughts, they gate their reality. You know, there's a lot of motivational speakers that are themselves mm -hmm. demotivated. <laughs> yes. A lot of motivational speakers who are not motivated. Mm. Oh, you know what motivates them? When there's a crowd sitting in front of them. Yeah. Then they start coaching everybody. Then they're throwing quotes mm. from everywhere. When are we going to hear your own quote? Your yes. own. Don't quote someone else. Quote you. You know what else? Young. There are people who tell me to be a motivational speaker. But I've always hated the idea of being a motivational speaker. Mm. Because I know what. Because I listen to them. If you read enough books, you've got enough things to say in 25 minutes to make people go, Wow, you're so smart. Yeah. Yes, he's knowledgeable. <laughs> But in real terms, all those things are in his head. They are not here. The truth is, when you live with a sense of conviction, every statement that comes out of your mouth is a quoted quote. I can tell you that. The people who have inspired us in the past are men and women who live with a sense of conviction, period. They zeroed in their mind, their thought process on the things that their life was about. And they just stayed there. And we have too many people who are just living life. Where's your conviction? Mm. You gotta have one. 
Because if you don't have one, someone's going to impose one on you. Yes. Too many young people who complain about how bad the government is, but have done nothing to change us in government. Too many people complain about how the system is failing them, but what have we done to fix the system that's failing us? We always forget politicians are a handful. The nation is a multitude. And that is the same that applies everywhere. The system, the people that change and control systems are always in the minority. And yet the system itself, the people, are in a majority. But how can five control 500,000? Because 500,000 didn't make up their mind what they're about. They are vehicles with no steering wheel, waiting for someone to come and insert one and then pull them. Most people are not vehicles with a wheel on. You know what they are? What do you call that? They're a trailer. Waiting to be towed. Yeah. They've got tires on, ready to go. But they've got no control over themselves. So they're like, someone told me, anywhere you go, I'll go with you. <laughs> but that's a dangerous way to live life. And that's why society, I mean, not that way. Let's talk about real issues. Why are gangsters everywhere? Why do they seem like gangsters are untouchable and they, they run society? You know why? Because there are too many people who will not make up their mind to stand up for what's right. Because they're afraid of dying. Mm. Newsflash, you are going to die anyways. You might as well die for something that's worth dying for. Some people live and die and never represent anything. And they live long. Yeah. Some people don't live that long, but they stood up for something. Martin Luther King is dead. I don't know how what was his age when he died, but that man stood up for something. Mm. Abraham Lincoln was one of the, the first American presidents who said, we cannot, slavery, this is the end of it. We're not doing it. And some people hated him enough to kill him. He's dead. But what he started and believed in continues forever. Yes. The ripple effect of that. And that's the power of the mind. When you zero in on, there is something about me. Yes. This is my conviction. Instead of just being there and just, mm, you know, <laughs> not really sure. Just you existing. Know, no, 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 no. There has to be something. So it starts with cultivating. You cultivate an environment. Your own bubble. You create your own bubble. You See, before you start talking about other people adding value to you, mm -hmm. you got to add value to yourself. Yeah. If, you're, if, you're, if you're a real person of value, you don't want people who don't have value pretending to have value. Sure. You want true value people coming around you so that the value effect increases. You know there's a multiplying effect. Mm. The multiplying effect only applies when you carry true value and I carry true value. The problem is, in society, what we have is one person who carries true value and ten other people who, are, who carry very, very little value. Mm -hmm. So we have no multiplying effect because by the time we Easy spread out his real value... Easy yeah. to influence them. Yeah, but see, the influence is the thing. Mm. You need to be a person of influence by first influencing your own thought process. By yourself. Influence that. Got that. Become a gatekeeper of that man. Mm. When we were talking earlier in the office, and I said entertainment, that's what it is. Mm. You just let information enter, unfiltered. Everything comes in in the name of entertainment. Not that I'm picking on uh, shows. There are shows I don't watch. You know why I don't watch them? Because I'm asking myself, what value is that to my belief system? Sure. If you don't have a belief system, everything comes. Yeah. Can I tell you something? A fish that cannot pick what is dinner and what's not will end up on a plate somewhere. Oh yeah. That's why they came up with the phrase hook, line, and sinker. Okay. Yeah. Because hook, line, and sinker means it's a fish that's so stupid and so mindless that oh. when he sees the thing going on, it's not even a living thing. It's a rubber. Mm. It's a rubber moving in the water. Oh. He doesn't even go and say, let's, let's examine this thing. Let's mm. check this thing. Is it? No, it just mm. chop. It's like it's colorful. It's beautiful. Go for it. And then you are someone's dinner. Wow. And there are too many people that are becoming dinners because they themselves, they just take everything hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. you got a mind, apply. If someone says something, take time to process what they've said. Yes. Do you know how, uh, what do you call them, uh, the extremist group grow? Mm. It's because they can access mindless people. <laughs> True. People who will not process information. Yeah. It comes. And they go for it. And they take our information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you even if you look at the political landscape here, yeah. there's a lot of things politically that's been said that is completely baseless. So many things that politicians would tell people and say, but we, and then you find out later there is absolutely no truth. 
to what he said. Mm. But people don't even find out themselves. They're like, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. How do you know it's true? And I, I want to challenge young people. That young people, you have acquired knowledge. Mm. But you need to use what you've acquired. Yes. Let that engage your mind. Cultivate in your mind a mm -hmm. mindset that makes you a force to be reckoned with. Yes. Not a soldier waiting to be recruited because you are just mm -hmm. sitting there neutral. Too many young people are weapons waiting to be used by by wicked forces. Because Unfortunately, it's not safe. yeah. Why? Why do it's they? Not safe. So that's the question. Why do people feel safe in being neutral? Because there's a statement they're not, titled "They're not required to." No, I tell you what. <laughs> there's a statement, very popular statement. There is safety mm -hmm. in number. You see, why that statement is true. Mm -hmm. With regards to certain things, there's safety in number. If you're walking on a quiet street, mm. there is safety in number. Get more people because the chances you'll be robbed if you're five mm. is less than if you're the only one walking on the street. Mm. There are places where safety in number reality applies. Yes. But safety in number does not apply when we're talking about this one. Mm -hmm. Mindset, there's no safety in number. Mm -hmm. Conviction. Mm -hmm. Conviction. You need to have one. Mm -hmm. Don't say, oh, what is everybody saying? No, 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 not what everybody is saying. What do you say? You know, and that's the thing. Most people don't have an opinion of their own about something. They've got someone else's opinion of that thing. He said, no, what did you say? Mm. You know, that's a, it's a very powerful thing. You can ask somebody, what do you think about this? Oh, no, he's got a lot of things to say. And most of what he's saying is not his opinion. It's opinions that have been casted on him. Mm. If you ask him, well, what do you think about it? Uh, well, I don't know. You, you need to know. Can I say something? Until you know. Don't say. Until you know. Don't believe. What you believe in your heart must be based on what you really genuinely know. So if you're not sure, don't accept it. Mm. And those who are very quick to talk, before you say a word, ask yourself, does that really resonate with me? Because, because if it doesn't, you just been recruited. Mm -hmm. Here. And there are just too many of those. Mm -hmm. Rec cheaply recruited. You know, you know I, I, I find it amazing how many, what do you call them now? They call themselves movements. All sorts of mm -hmm. institutions yeah. that just pop up everywhere in the name of being a movement. Mm -hmm. And how gullible people are. People just follow them. And before you know the movement that is baseless, meaningless, going nowhere, has got 500 followers. Mm -hmm. Going where? There's some lady I used to work with. She, she used to tell me, um, you should start a church. You're very charming. Charming? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, what? Well, that, that's interesting. Is that why people start churches? <laughs> To be honest, because people start they, churches for all sorts of reasons, and most of them are not right. I'll be honest with you. I remember talking to someone and I said, someone who said, oh, but you can speak well, start a church. Mm. Oh, but you're charismatic, start a church. You don't do those things because you think you have some sort of set skill. <laughs> no. You do it because there is a conviction. Yes. You, you have to, look, don't jump into the driver's seat except you know where you're going. There are too many people. They just see the seat is vacant. Mm -hmm. They hop in and there are people in the bus and they just keep driving them. Mm -hmm. May I say something to you? Every time you've ever entered into a bus, do you not first establish where it's going? Yes, you do. Very interesting. When I first moved to South Africa, I struggled with public transportation. I had no vehicle, so <laughs> but I struggled because mm -hmm. taxis won't stop. So I'm standing mm. in where supposed to be the bus. Mm. So I'm expecting mm. that when he sees me, he's just going to stop and ask me where I'm going because where, where I'm from, that's how it goes. You know, the guys will stop and say, okay, I'm going to, and then, okay, I'm also mm. going there. So I'm like, so I do this. Yeah. That's how we do it now. Yeah. We just we sort of flag you down. And the guy just, and the taxi driver does this while he's driving past me. I'm like, hey, man, how about you stop first? Yes. It was later I found out you have to, they are signs. This Enjoy means something, movie, this means something, mm. and there's another one that, mm. so all sorts oh. of signs, so, so one would say, this one tells you he's town. going there, town, yeah. and, so he's expecting me to say town, mm. by my finger. I'm like, how about you stop and tell me where you're going first? Because, because I've told the uh, taxi driver, like, 
I'm not from here. I don't know the signs. No, they I expect you to started, catch up on the signs. I mean, you, you're losing out on money now. Now you're driving past and they, <laughs> I don't know the signs. You don't know that I don't know the signs. And, but look, so I, I would stand at a, at a so bus station weird. and never get fetched by any bus, any taxi. They all come and pass me by. But then I notice someone comes and stands next to me, makes the right sound, oh, mm. shoo. Then they stop. So the only way I ever got into buses or taxis was when somebody standing next to me was going to where I was going. <laughs> but now the reason I'm actually talking about that is you don't get into a bus except you know where the bus is going. Mm. But you know what? In real terms, a lot of people are hopping into buses that they don't even know where it's going. Oh, it's going. You know why? Because most people assume they know where the bus is going. Because one, everybody's going there. Or number two, everybody's heading there. Yeah. In fact, when we were growing up, we were told, "Don't enter into a taxi that's that's empty," because of you know the issues. Oh, safety issues. So that if, if there's more people in it, it's better. It's safer to get into that mm. one. And people carry that into everyday life. We go to places and go to angles where there's a lot more people. Look at look at kids who, who who finish matric, and they are figuring out what to go and study in varsity. Everybody sort of herds in certain directions. Like okay, these are the norms, you know. Mm -hmm. They they all head there, including those who do not know, who have no clue what that thing is about, or even <laughs> think that they've got the set skill to do it. <laughs> yeah. You see a guy who struggles, struggles with maths, mm -hmm. going to university to become a, an engineer. Then his first year, he's struggling in school. Yeah, of course you will struggle. Wow. Because Martin, your strength. If you lean towards law or something, you do better. Yeah. But because everybody is doing it, mm -hmm. I've always said something. Everybody is doing it does not make it right for you. Yep. Popular opinion is not always good for you. Mm -hmm. You need to have personal ones. And that's not about you being a rebel. That's you starting from the place of conviction. Yes. Know your story before you hear other people's story. Mm. Because if you don't have a story, they will pin theirs in your canvas, on your canvas. And I've seen that happen a lot of times. People with no identity, mm. identities get in, what do you call it, imposed on them. Yeah. Without them knowing. You know, you know, it's easier to paint on a blank canvas than to paint on one that already has a painting on it. Mm. Go into the world with a sense of conviction. This is what I represent. And until you know what your conviction has, keep all the information far away until you have identity. Too many people just hopping in and hopping mm. out. And all of those things is what creates the society we see today. Confused people, depressed people. Mm. It's because of information that's just coming in unfiltered. Yeah. I mean, if you spend a whole weekend watching all sorts of serial killers and how they think <laughs> and how they what what, be warned. Yeah, nightmares. Be warned. If you no look, if you watch horror movies all weekend, mm. please don't be surprised if you have nightmares. Mm. Because that's what comes with it. It's part of the package. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I don't like watching horror movies, not because I'm scared or anything. It's just that I don't understand the value or the sense <laughs> in doing that. So a guy makes the movie called Saw. Mm. How they chop people oh, into body parts. I mean, like, what is that? <laughs> no, look, I'm just asking myself, to what yeah. end is that? Mm. Except that it creates, it puts the fear of everything in you. I mean, we were talking earlier on, and I think I just mentioned that in passing. When you asked me and said, most women would say, oh no, not most, a lot of women, it's increasingly very popular nowadays where women say, I don't need a man. Mm. And you said that to me earlier and I said, I don't need a man. And, she, and you asked me, what was that about? And I said, when a woman says, I don't need a man, it's half a statement. <laughs> it's not a complete statement. You know why? I don't need a man to boss me around. Mm. I don't need a man to break my heart. Mm. I don't need a man to control me. I don't need a man to mm. abuse me. I don't need a man to misuse me. I don't. So it is a it is a confession of what they fear, but they do not tell you what they really fear. So they tell you the first part of it. I'm keeping you at the arms length, and, and that, that that is very key, because mind in itself, if you're afraid, you create a defense. That's true. And I think that that's what a lot of information does. It just creates fear within people, mm. and that fear. All of a sudden, you create defenses of all sorts. All men and dogs. Says who? Except you have a doggy pal or something. <laughs> Not all men are dogs. All women are witches. Oh, well, I know mean. where you find that. Where are you going to get that? There are wonderful people out there. You know, white people are racist. Mm, mm. Really? I don't know. Is it? My friends are cool. <laughs> exactly. There's a lot of these things that we just pick in this, that people pluck in the sky. 
particularly very popular things. Yeah. I can tell you mm -hmm. something. If you take the 10 most popular statements in society, you will probably find out that nine of them are not true. I mean, I mean let's try. Let's take some popular things that are you know, like, really popular in society mm -hmm. and, and throw them on the table and you realize that most of them are not true. But because people mistake popular with true, that's the problem. We mistake that, we assume. You know, we, we do the same thing with online shopping. Mm -hmm. We feel more comfortable if it's a popular online shopping platform than an unknown no, no, one. You. You know, that, that, that is society's <laughs> way of measure. So we, we measure things and say, if it's popular, it's true. But oftentimes, when it's popular, it's not true. Popularity does not make something true. It just means that more people are taking it yes. without questioning it. Yes. There's so many things that we need to check in society. Mm. So when I first came to South Africa, I was told by all the black people I bumped into, first, you know, you are right, you're a black guy, obviously, black people are the first people who start talking to you. And they're like, hey, white people are racist. Mm. Mm. Now, I'm coming from a country where we don't even see white people. Yeah, like, they are rare. It's like, if a white person passes your street in a car, it's yeah. like an angel just passed you. Yeah. You probably, you're most likely to run into an angel in Nigeria than you run into a white person. <laughs> So you come here and they're everywhere, you know, so I was told, oh, they're, they're racist. Funny mm. enough, my first batch of friends were white people. Yeah, Amazing guys. And the first set of black people I knew, mm. super racist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a Zulu guy who's upset that I wouldn't greet him in, yeah. that was his yes, oh, yeah. But I don't understand your language. But then he says, yo, you must learn my language. Mm. Your language is one of 11 in this country. Why must I learn yours? Mm. Yeah. I want to learn a language, but you're not going to bully me into which language to yes. learn. But you see that? It's popular opinion. Most of the people saying that white people are racist have not even had an encounter with a single white one. So guess what? There was a time our church was having a program. We were supposed to have like an event, like a Saturday event of some sort. And we needed a, a pool table. So we went around and then I was told by someone that there is a particular bar in a suburb. Mm. It was a, a, a bar that had a couple of pool tables. The man's name was Mr. Mr. Gordon. I know his son. But it was said in those days, all the people I knew, I've never been to the bar before, I don't drink. So they're like, no, white, only white people go to that bar to drink. White, black people are not allowed in there. And I've, I've met a couple of white people who actually said that to me before. Mm. So I'm like, okay, cool, I'm going there. So I went there with the guy who we used to walk together at the church. So we got there, he was shocked. This guy, who followed me, surprised. Mr. Gordon, one of the nicest guys you ever meet. Mm -hmm. We were in his place for over two hours. His wife came, offered us tea, cookies, whatever he shows us all the pool tables and then says which one do you guys want we picked one he offered to come and drop it up there with his own backy and come back and fetch it and then he took us around his entire yard asking what are the other things you guys might need hmm. for the event and when we walked out of his house it's because his house is next to his bar we walked out Vanelle said i'm learning something today hmm. public opinion is not always true is it Almost everybody in that community believed that guy was racist. Almost everybody. And guess what? 99% of them have never met him before. Do you know how many things and people you have written off in your space because someone said? And that person might be the doorway for you to access something. Now listen. Anybody can sit in a shack and say, well, there are no opportunities in this country. Is that really your own truth or the popular opinion? Mm. Oh, there are no jobs in South Africa. Mm, really now? Is that is that the case? Oh, that's what you're saying. Mm. Oh, there is no. You, you know, there, there's so many things that young people and older people talk about today that are actually not true. Mm. Because on the point of verification, it will fail. But because we don't verify, mm -hmm. we will not be able to establish what is true and what's popular. Fear what is popular, because oftentimes what is popular is the way to keep people poor, to keep people marginalized, yes. to keep people low, and to keep people defeated. What is popular is not often time not what is true. Mm. And what is true is not popular. You know why I know truth is not popular? Because we don't like the truth that you will be. So real truth ain't popular. If it's popular, it's got to, you know what they say, if it's too good to be true, probably is. Mm -hmm. The same thing. It's been sugar-coated, it's been beefed up, they've added things to it, they've painted it to look nice. You know, I realized that when they do food adverts, 
The actual food they use, the food they use in the eyes, actually not food. Yeah, it was made. Yeah. That's why the, 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 the lettuce looks like it just fell out of the skies, you know. <laughs> and the buns is like, oh my word, yeah. like did they come out of a bakery or out of heaven? So you realize, oh, it's not a real bun. That's why it looks so amazing. Because yeah, when they you sweet. order your bun and you're your bun, you're like, not the same one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but, but because they look, they understand the power. If they make the food look attractive, yeah. you want to buy it. Illusion. Illusion. And that's the thing. Fear popularity. I, I, I think it's important, particularly for young people. Yeah, you know, when, when, when I hear something is trending, Mm. What we do is we pick our phones and we go check it out. Yes. It's trending. There's, for example, there are stories in South Africa right now that are trending yes. so much. And I'm asking myself a question. Uh, you know, this, this story that is trending is trending because of the incompetence of a group of people. That if it was dealt with last year, it would not have been a story to even like. But now, because of abandonment, because. Like, because of mm. abandonment or, or because of negligence, sorry, it's now become a story. Yeah. So, sir, we should make a movie out of it. Guys, we don't make movies out of dysfunction. We, 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 we learn how not to be dysfunctional so we can be a functional state. But that's the problem. People have mistaken this thing of if it's popular, it's got value. Mm. Popularity doesn't mean value, people. And we must fear what's popular. All this, it's trending. Mm. Why must I follow what's trending? Because oftentimes what's trending, it's like a flower. It blooms today, it dies tomorrow. Yes. Once upon a time, there were things that were trending. Once upon, I remember there was a time there was a white teacher who danced. Yeah, danced to some, I think, I don't know what she was dancing to, some South African yeah. song somewhere. I'm a piano. I'm a piano or something. And she was trending. And I'm asking myself, uh, excuse me, it was only a dance. What? What's that? And I don't think she danced to trend. She was just dancing to inspire students. Yes. Yes. But we are all just looking for something to talk about. Mm -hmm. So popularity becomes our truth. So guess what? So people begin to distort their truth to be popular mm -hmm. in order for people to buy into it. And all of a sudden, no one wants to stand in the place of truth anymore. People just want to sit there and say, how can I make my version of stories popular? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be true anymore. And there's a song that says, I have to be true to myself. Got to be true to myself, and it's important. People have to be true to themselves. I don't know that one. Yeah, it's an old song. Don't worry. You know, if I know any song, probably most people don't know it. <laughs> and the songs you guys know, I probably don't know it. Yeah, you know, of course, because they're popular. You know, <laughs> and, and that's the thing. Everybody even creates music because they want it to be popular. Yeah. People write books because they want it to be popular. Mm -hmm. People post stuff because they want it to be popular. In fact, and when people don't find something that can trend to to, to, to post, mm. they take somebody else's post and repost or retweet. Yes. How about your own? Mm. Either it's popular or not, is it your truth? Because if it is your truth, then stand there. Because they don't have substance. Yeah, because there isn't substance, and the reason why there's not because your mind is not engaged in the realities yeah. of who you are. Mm -hmm. It's engaged in all sorts of all meaningless, baseless realities of other people. You know, people like to follow stars. You know why? We want to gain insight into their lives. Mm. How about I gain insight into my life? Why will I be following Beyonce and see what she's doing with her day? I am not such a fierce. I know she doesn't buy clothes from me. She doesn't buy shoes from me or makeup from me. You know, so it's that thing. People follow people that don't even know you're following them. So you're following them, you're enriching them, but they are adding no value to you. That is a very strange thing. Look, I'm not against, if you love football, enjoy your football. Mm. If you, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not saying people shouldn't be fans of something. But always measure how much of a fan are you of other people as much as you're a fan of yourself. Very dangerous. I need to be a fan of myself first before I start being a fan of other people. I gotta be a fan of my, I'm my own fan. Because if you can't celebrate you, yeah. why would somebody else celebrate you? If you don't value you, why, would, why should someone else, please explain to me why somebody else should value you. And value starts with thoughts. The thoughts you think yes. dictate the value yes. you acquire. Because it cultivates an atmosphere that ensures that the right things are growing in, within your space. Mm -hmm. And when value grows within your space, your value rises, and you become not only an inspiration, but you pull people, and you also add value to them. talking about uh, supporting a soccer team and yes. how much support 
uh, this article I read uh, the other day, according to a new um, psychology study, people who are obsessed with celebrities are less intelligent. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't say that. Someone said that. <laughs> but you know why it's true? You know why I believe that statement is true? We get what you call starstruck. Mm -hmm. People get starstruck and stop thinking. Mm. You, know, you know, it's like meeting your idol. But you freeze. Your brain stops working. Yeah. And celebrities understand why they need to create a perception of themselves that's mm. not necessarily who they are. So they create a persona of themselves that you love. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? You, you find, for example, 50 Cent. Mm. He doesn't even drink. But he creates this perception of this guy who, mm -hmm. who parties. Who, so all the people who are shaking to his yeah. music and, and have a whatever in their hand, the guy's not even living the life that you guys are busy, whatever. There. But he understands that's the package you want. So he packages that for you. So but he's really another life. And they understand business. So they package the version of them that mm. they think you want. But they're there doing something else. Mm -hmm. And it's a danger when popularity is what people base their truth on or not, and not on facts. Fact. The fact. The fact. And the fact is the only thing that matters because it's been verified. Popularity, oftentimes, is not verifiable, but it's carried on from one person to another. Yeah. For example, you think about a rumor, for example. Someone says, oh, this happened. Most people just spread rumors without even establishing it is true. Mm -hmm. I heard from the grapevine. Who's the grapevine? Yeah. Who? Last time I checked, there's nobody with the name the grapevine. But the grapevine is always some loose head somewhere mm. who's just trying to propagate something that he scooped up in his head. And people who don't verify will take that and carry it around and carry it around and before you know it it's all over the place it's popular but it's destructive yeah. it's popular but has no value and i think that it's important that people go back and do self-introspection yeah. you start here my thoughts need to be right what i'm thinking about are they based on real stuff or are they based on fantasy because sometimes people get themselves in trouble too when they spend their whole day thinking about baseless stuff. Mm. Because then they want to make it real in their own in their own mm. head. And once you decide to take something that's baseless and make it a reality, you live in you live in, you, you, in big, big, big trouble. And three years, ten years will pass. And that person will ask himself, what have I done with myself? Yeah, because you are floating on the wings of all the things that people are saying and not going. I need to get myself planted somewhere, get a base, get a root, grow from there, and grow fruit one day that has value to me mm -hmm. and to my society. I'm not going to be another one waiting to be recruited by some some extremist Loud mouth. or some guy with a big voice to him. No, mm -hmm. I want to be a person who cultivates my garden yes. so that weed is not growing in it.